Locked On Zags, your daily podcast on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, y'all? Welcome to the Locked On Zags podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Andy Patton, and I am thrilled to be joined today by University of Portland head basketball coach, Shantae Leggins, coming off a great first season with the Pilots. Coach, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to come chat with me. Thanks for having me. Um, talk about basketball during the time is always good. I'd rather be playing in the, in the big day. But talking about it is just almost as good. Well, I, I again, I appreciate you coming on. Um, I want to talk about the first year that you had in Portland, obviously a program that uh, won one game in conference play in the last three seasons. Uh, you took the team over this year, seven and seven in conference play, 18 and 14 overall. Uh, by all accounts, from our perspective, at least watching the program, a tremendous success. I would love to get your thoughts on how your first year went down on the bluff. Well, thank you for that. Um, you know, I thought it was a solid year. You know, um, you know this is the first year. My coaching staff and I haven't been playing in the conference championship to try mm-hmm. to play the NCAA tournament, so that was that was something new to get used to. You know, I, I thought we we could have done. You know, I you know, I'm always going to think we could have done better. Sure. You know, top half of the league. I want to be one of the top three. I wanted to win the league, to be honest. Uh, mm-hmm. you know how hard that's going to be. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, you know, I, I thought it was a good year for our first year. You know, getting a new team together and and not you know having the opportunity to grow with them during you know the springtime, the fall. Mm-hmm. Summer and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of that's kind of difficult, but you know, I, I thought we did a good job. I, I thought the players adapted well to what they had to do, bringing in a whole new team. Uh-huh. Um, not not one player that played on last year's roster played in a minute this year. You know, in, in the game besides Wyatt Watson, who you know uh, has been here for a while, but besides that, there's no really you know minutes from last year's team. Not a bucket, not an assist, not nothing. Uh-huh. And so being able to do that is kind of it was kind of interesting. Um, and sometimes, but, you know, building the culture and bringing in the new guys, I think it was it was a solid first year. You know, we, we, we're looking to grow from that. Well, that's, that's what I wanted to ask you about, because obviously continuity is a big part of success in, in all sports and particularly in college basketball. It's often kind of labeled as something that helps teams advance uh, in the NCAA tournament and, and have a lot of success with having guys who played together before. That was not the case with this team at all. Very, very yeah. new team. Uh, what was it like, you know, getting getting on campus, obviously, and then having this brand new group of guys and having to get them together and start playing hoops and, you know, and just a, less than a few months, really. It was it was it, at times it was difficult because, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're going through the recruiting process and, you know, you, you get to bring three of your guys. Everyone thinks you bring you brought all these guys, yeah. you brought three of the guys, um, you know, that, that 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 were at Eastern with me, um, mm-hmm. I recruited those guys. And so you. You bring three of those guys, you bring some continuity with them, but you know, you look at it and every kid you're recruiting and everybody you're trying to get, they're looking at the records from previous years. They're looking mm-hmm. at, you know, well, I want to go to the tournament. This is my last year. And so you're in the transfer portal and you're looking around and guys aren't really saying, Hey, I want to come there. You know, I'm, I want to get there. And so, you know, luckily we had some, some young men that we recruited before, um, like Chris Austin that, that we knew, um, mm-hmm. you know, guys of Moses Wood. And so we had to go from there. So it, w- it was a tough situation because, like you said, they were all new. Uh, they haven't played together. E- even the guys that I brought from Eastern, Mike Meadows and Tyler mm-hmm. Robertson and, and Jack Perry, they all had to have different roles. Mm-hmm. So it, w- it was new for everybody. And so um, being able to, to just start, you know, laying the foundation of the culture, laying the foundation of the guys that we want um, and, and how, how we can get that done was, was, was the hard part. Uh, but it was also the fun part, you know, mm-hmm. doing the first time with these guys that you've done before you know it's it's not as stale you know a couple of jokes that you know we say that that are old jokes that everyone else is new to these guys and so um so that that's kind of cool um and so it it was fun to try to try to you know move pieces around and try to make us you know a a successful team absolutely i want to talk a little bit about tyler robertson because you brought him up specifically and you talked about how he came in and and was going to have a different role um, I'm sure you knew him better than just about anybody and what he was going to bring to this team. But my yeah. goodness, he had such an incredible season. You just talk a little bit about the kind of performances that he put together because he was one of the most fun players to watch in the entire conference. Well, he, he was unbelievable. He was a top. He was a top in assists. Mm-hmm. I think it was top five in assists. Uh, I think everything was top ten for him. You know, yep. and, and so you know, you, you you know you're in a league that's really good when you got a guy like that and not be on the first team. Mm-hmm. You know? 
Um, you know you're playing against some really good players, but he he did everything for us this year. He ran point guard. He, he played the five position. Mm-hmm. I lost you. I lost you. Audio, Coach. You there? Yeah, it's coming back. There we go. Sorry about that. I no had uh, someone called. Let me make sure I could just silent this thing. There we go. Cool. All good. Um, don't know, but I can deal with it. Um, but, you know, he was one of those guys that, that really made the team uh, work. You know, he, he could get buckets. He probably took the more parts than anybody in the league. Um, he defended one through five. He played offensively through five. And so when you were able to have a guy like that and him selfless like that, understand what we needed. And then also be the guy that I would yell at and get on the most <laughs> uh, was, is, is, was huge. And so, uh, you know, it's funny, he just walked in. Uh, <laughs> but he is one of those guys that uh, will keep getting better. You'll look yeah. at him and you'll overlook him. Um, you, you'll say, ah, oh, he's okay. Uh, he can't do this. He can't do that. But you, you got to look at what he can do. And he mm-hmm. can do a lot. And he's been um, doing that for us. Uh, for the last couple of years. Again, he's another kid that, you know, his freshman year, he didn't play a lot of minutes. Mm-hmm. He could have packed it up and left and said, I want to go play at, you know, somewhere else. Um, yeah. He goes in the transfer portal after he had a good year. Six man of the year could have went pretty much almost to any school he wanted to. Um, mm-hmm. But he said, you know what, I'm going to go build this as a new coach and, and we're going to make this thing work. All right? mm-hmm. and, and so I, I couldn't be more grateful to him and the guys that came over. I want to talk a little bit about the transfer portal in general, because obviously it was a tremendous part of your offseason and will likely continue to be a big part of your offseasons going forward. Uh, obviously, NCAA rules uh, have made it so that this is such a significant part of just the college basketball game in general. Tons more roster churn than there's ever been in years past. Um, h- how has the kind of adapting to that been and how do you think it's going to continue to kind of go as coaches have to really adapt to, to having a lot less continuity year in and year out? Yeah, that's that's going to be that's going to be you know in some ways it's going to be good, in some ways it's going to be bad. Um, you know, I wish they adopted the thing where you know the, the, the student athlete had to be there at least until their sophomore year. Yeah, they could really go make some decisions. Um, I think it gives the coaches ways out. I think it gives the players a way out. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, we make mistakes on recruit sometimes, and so does everybody else. And so having that transfer portal uh, can really hurt and help. And so you know, at Eastern Washington, I didn't have a transfer on my team. You know, they were all high school kids. And so, you know, I want to get back to that model as much as I can. But you're going to have to, you know, adapt. You're going to have to make, you know, plays here and there where you can go get a guy that's going to, you know, plug in and play. And Mm -hmm. it's going to be hard because sometimes kids are transferring, you know, for the right reasons. And some kind of kids are transferring not for the right reasons. And you got to try to figure that out and, and see who's going to fit with your, you know, he could find a guy basketball wise, but who's going to fit in the locker room? You know, right. who's going to come in and say, "Hey, I'm coming from this school. I know I'm. Way, we were better than this school next year. I'm the man now." And right. so those are those are things that you're going to have to try to weed your way through, find the right guy, and go from there. Um, you know, I, I love high school kids. I think they're they're the ones you want to build on. But there's there's, there's young men in the portal that you have to go find and get and. You know, I have I brought five or six over um, with me. Uh, I had to find the portal, and so from there you got six. And so, were we able to really get a deep dive into them in such a short amount of time? No, um, but luckily I've known I knew some of them, and, and going forward, that's what you have to really do. You have to have a relationship with guys, and and you have to try to figure out what will fit with your team. But the transfer portal, man, it, it, it can make or break, or yeah. It could put you in a bad spot. You go get a wrong. You go get the wrong transfer. Who's got a lot of pull and really is alpha dog in the locker room, and he's just mm-hmm. not the kind of guy you want. That could ruin your whole season. Mm-hmm. Um, we can go get that perfect one yeah, via San Francisco, mm-hmm. and he's the perfect one. And now they're dancing, you yeah. know. And so that's just sometimes you just got to do. You got you to work a little bit harder and find out who the kids you are. You bring. Absolutely. I, I want to talk a little bit about your time at Eastern Washington uh, before we get into some more of that WCC stuff. Uh, I know I know it's not quite Spokane, but you're out there, similar area. I was cu- curious kind of your impressions on being out in the inland Northwest, uh, what the atmosphere was like out there, uh, out in Eastern Washington. It was a great place. I lived in 
Cheney. Um, I lived in Cheney, Washington with my wife and kids. So I, I thought it was, I thought it was great, you know, to be honest. Um, it, it was, it was a college town. It was away from Spokane. So you didn't really have to feel the, you know, the, the, the fact that you got, you know, a major powerhouse right down the street, mm-hmm. you know, so that their shadow was over cat, you know, draws a big cat, you know, shadow, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't really on us out there. Um, but, you know, I, it was, it was a great experience. You know, the yeah. people were great. Um, they love their basketball in that, in that area. They love Eastern Washington. You know, you have Gonzaga there, but we, we had some zoners and different things that were, you know, helping Gonzaga, but they're also helping Eastern. And so mm-hmm. I felt, you know, we we're in a good spot. Um, Eastern was it's a special place, will be a special place to me for a long time. Um, met my wife there. Kids were born in Spokane. Um, not California kids, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, they're, they're, that's where a lot of my, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot there, and mm-hmm. I learned, uh, you know, that if you work hard, you can get what you, you you're looking for, no matter what. You put your head down and, and do the right things. I think you can you can find success. Absolutely, uh, Coach. I want to talk a little bit about Gonzaga. It is locked on Zags, after all. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> you I was are... ready. I was prepared. <laughs> she came down to Portland, uh, got a chance to play Gonzaga in Spokane, obviously. Uh, just some thoughts on that team after seeing them up close. Oh, man, they're they're really good. You know, you, you, you said something earlier um, talking about experience, and, mm-hmm. and they've had guys on that team uh, that are experienced. Drew Timmy, experienced. You know, their guard, experienced. You know, Antoine Watson, experienced. So they got guys this year on the team that are major contributors that are that, are, that have been there. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's why you know I think they should they should get the you know the nod this year and, and have the best shot at winning, and so you know being able to play that team, you know, I said hey, how are we going to beat them? And so I said we're going to let them you know we're going to we're going to give them threes and contest late, <laughs> bad coaching, <laughs> bad coaching, but at the same time we're going to the record books with them. You know we, we let them hit the most threes they've hit in the game before, so at the same time. You got to give them something. They're that good. And uh, as, as we keep going, that's what we want to challenge. We want to challenge them. That's the best team in the league. And if you don't want to try to catch them, then you shouldn't be in the league. And so, But that team's really good. Coach Fuse, unbelievable. His staff does a great job. Um, their guys are, you know, they, they compete. They understand what they're going to do. I think they have, they have the best shot at winning it this year. I'll tell you what, I challenge them to shoot threes. That doesn't sound like bad coaching to me because if you let them get, if you let them shoot in the inside, you're almost certainly going to lose. Uh, you make them beat you from the outside, but uh, I can't tell you I thought that they were going to knock down that many threes against uh, against your squad. But they uh, me either. We, I mean, if you look at it, we had more points in the paint than they did. Yeah, that's why that was one of the only times all year that happened, and it just happened to be they were on fire. And again, you know, they they did a good job. I think coach knew. Coach Fugue knew what we're going to try to do. And, and uh, you know, we just got to make sure next time we get the opportunity to play them that we switch some things up. But they, they, were, they were really good. It was fun to play them. It was fun to be in Spokane. Uh, but I, I, to me, that, that, that has one of the – that may, they may be the team to beat. They are the team to beat, to be honest. Well, one of the things that people use as an argument against Gonzaga, as you have probably heard for years and years, uh, is the argument against the WCC and how the the conference maybe does not prepare them for the NCAA tournament. I think looking at a team that has made seven straight Sweet 16s and two of the last four uh, national championships probably proved that point wrong. Uh, I also think that the evidence is pretty overwhelming that the WCC was very, very good this year. Obviously, your team took a giant step forward, but you mentioned San Francisco a little bit as a team that is going dancing for the first time since 1998. Uh, as a first-time coach getting to experience all of these teams, I'm curious your thoughts on, on the conference in general and maybe the, the perception versus the reality on this on these teams. Well, the reality is they're really good, and the reality is the league's good. And so, like, you're looking at a team like Santa Clara that mm-hmm. didn't make it. Yeah. And you're thinking, like, okay, well, they were really good when they were – didn't have their big guy, right? They're really good. They, they, they were okay. When they had their big guy, they beat everybody. Yeah. They're a really good team. And so, um, you know, I, I wish they'd look at things like that. Like, same same with same with BYU. They mm-hmm. didn't make it. But they no one talks about the two guys they lost. They lost yeah. two post players. Yeah. And before that, they were beating people by 20 points. And they didn't mm-hmm. make it. You know, and so everyone goes, oh, well, they're, 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 they're okay. So, Gonzaga doesn't play anybody, but in the preseason, they beat everybody. Mm-hmm. Those teams, they beat her in the tournament. And so 
and they don't just beat them. They beat them pretty well and beat yeah. them handily. And so, you know, I, I look at that. I always crack up. I was one of those guys when I was in the league. Like, oh, they don't play anybody. <laughs> they don't play anybody. But, you know, see, in their preseason, you got to mm-hmm. preseason. They beat, they beat Duke. They beat, mm-hmm. they beat all these. They beat Texas. By, I mean, they just blow people out. Yeah. And, and it's like, all right, when, when is that going to stop? You know, they, they beat UCLA. They go down and they play against Baylor, who was probably played one of the best tournament games they could possibly play. And yeah. so they've done that. They played in the championship game. They played in the final four. They, they keep doing it. It's like, who else has done that in college basketball? They haven't won the big one, but who else has done mm-hmm. what they've done over the last 10 years? You can't name a team. Yeah. Duke maybe, but then the next year they didn't. But the difference between them and Duke is Duke won, won. and you know, so you got to be lucky to win some games. And, yeah. and you know, somebody knock off Baylor and this, that, and the other. And now you're you know, talking about Gonzaga, three, and just different things like that. If the big fella can make a couple layups against North Carolina, they think yeah. that. I mean, who yeah. thinks the big fella doesn't shoot that well in that game? I know I didn't. You know? Yeah. Um, and so you look at that and you look at the St. Mary's is always really good. Um, I, I have them getting pretty far. Um, they're going to be, they'll be beating a Pac-12 team this year to get mm-hmm. somewhere. Um, they'll be also beating on a team that uh, beat Gonzaga last year. I could promise you that. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it's exciting to see. But you have them. You have San Francisco. Uh, guard plays huge. They got two of the best guards that they're playing. They're playing. They, they got a tough draw against uh, Murray State. Yeah, you know you, you, that's a that's a real that's a, you, you have two of the best mid major teams playing against each other. You got to figure that out. Um, mm-hmm. But then you got Santa Clara that's really good this year. You got and, and, and BYU that was good. And so you look at five teams and you're like those five teams could put anybody in the country. Mm-hmm. And I, I really do believe that, and especially if healthy. And so that's what the other five teams in our league we need to start building towards. You know where they're at and what we can do make our league one of those leagues that are like that's a basketball league you know that's a league that is going to get in three four five teams maybe when the when the conference when the NCAA tournament comes around and that's what we're building towards and and that's what it looks like at least to me absolutely and that, that's kind of what I want to talk about to, to close out the show is like you talked about how transfers may be hesitant to go to a school where they don't feel like it's as likely that they're going to make the NCAA tournament. And I can understand why particularly grad transfers or older guys would, would want that. Mm-hmm. But now you look at a conference that, hey, it's not just Gonzaga. It's not just Gonzaga and the St. Mary's. You know, there's three teams this year. There's five that arguably deserved it. And, and you're kind of starting to see that build a little bit. How crucial is is putting a team like San Francisco, the first non-Gonzaga, St. Mary's, BYU team in the tournament. How, how big is that? And how do you think that's going to help this conference potentially continue to grow into a basketball uh, powerhouse? It's, going to, it's huge because people see that, you know, it, it's, it's, so it's, it's now a world of information. You type anything in you want and it pops up. And, you know, the Pac-12 has three teams in it. Mm-hmm. We have three teams in it. should have four. Yeah. Mountain West has four teams in it. We should have four teams in. BYU's right there on the cusp. And I, mm-hmm. I, I really do feel like you're the third place team, Santa Clara. Yeah. They should be in. Just it's just it's I mean, that's what it should be. And so you, you look at that, you recruit, you, you guys want to play in the NCAA tournament. Um, it puts you a step ahead of a lot of teams. Um, and, and if you're thinking like, hey, we want to be in the top three. And if you're the top three in that league, you should be an automatic NCAA tournament team. Mm-hmm. And you know, Santa Clara is in the top three in the league. So they should be, and so they didn't get the, they didn't get the opportunity. This good, San Francisco was good all year. Don't get me wrong, and mm-hmm. you know, numbers and all that. I'm, I'm I just oops, I don't know anything about <laughs> the numbers, and there's much smarter people than me to talk those numbers out. But um, I, I think the teams that got into the tournament are very deserving. I think Santa Clara should have maybe got a nod um, just because how good. They Rankage. Um, mm-hmm. I think that team beats somebody in the NCAA tournament. I think I'm looking at it. You know, the, the toughest draw is 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 Port San Francisco because they yeah. got Murray State, and that's going to be a game that yeah. you don't want to miss. And you know, barring injuries and things like that, I'm, I'm looking at Santa, Santa Clara like, man, they're really good. I we played everybody. That was mm-hmm. one of the top three offensive teams with them and Gonzaga that we played. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you know, it, 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 it helps us with recruiting. 
It helps us bring in players. It helps that players in this league get drafted. It helped that player in this league are playing in the top European leagues in the country. Spain, you know, all the, it helps. And so um, when you have that in a, in a league, you're just going to keep getting better. You got to be hungry to want to get there and you want to be able to compete. Uh, what we want to do, we want to win this league. You know, everyone says you don't, you don't want to say that. It's like saying you can't, like Harry Potter, you can't say Voldemort. You know, you can't <laughs> say you want to beat the big bad Gonzaga, but that's what you want to do, man. They, it's, it's going to, it's going to be hard and all that. Mm-hmm. It's fun to watch Gonzaga play because of the way they play, but that's where you want to get to. You know, you don't want to be in the top five. You want to win it, and so. Um, but but it, it, it's it's a, it's a heck of a league. I'm lucky to be a, a part of it, and we're really definitely looking to be, you know, that team um, that can break it constantly and be part of that, that, okay, they have a chance to go every single year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think if you're, if, if you're not saying that you want to beat Gonzaga, then like you said, it's kind of like, what, you know, what, what are we doing what are you here? Doing? I yeah. know Randy Bennett was kind of talked after the, the championship game and said like, look, we're not happy just like hanging out around with Gonzaga. We're not happy you know, being second place, like we want to beat them every single time we play them. And for him, beating them one out of three times was not enough. And I can promise you that Mark, that's what he wants. <laughs> that's what he wants coaches to be saying. Like he wants everybody to try to beat him every single time out. You got to figure it out. Yeah. And, and what they've done is they they have a great blueprint. They stick to it. And mm-hmm. you got players. And yeah. so it makes you go want to, if you're hungry, you want to go get players. Yeah. And you go find the right guys. You got to find the guys that can beat Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. And that's the league. You know, yeah. that's that's what you're doing. If you're saying, hey, I want to be second, third, fourth, fifth, that's mm-hmm. not you shouldn't be in there. You go for championships. I mean, you yeah. play cards, mm-hmm. you play, you know, you play connect four. You're not yeah. oh, I don't wanna I don't wanna connect three, you gotta connect four, you wanna yeah. be in. So um, you know, it, it, it hurts to lose. Um, mm-hmm. this is a fun league, man. It challenges you in so many different ways and there's so many good coaches in this league, and so you gotta figure out different ways to win every single night and and that's been that's been a lot of fun you know for yeah. my staff and my players well coach congratulations on an incredible first season uh, i'm really excited to see uh, how the, how things shake out for you guys going forward uh, i think there's a, a lot of opportunity for growth uh, at the portland program and really glad to see you at the helm and, and thanks again for coming on the show i really appreciate you taking time man thank you for having me um i do got i, I can't give you my whole thing but i do got uh some Gonzaga guys playing at the end against each other. So that should be pretty fun. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. (laughs) All right, man. Go Pilots. Thanks. Go Pilots.